Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Type Make Your Loco channel. Uh, today it's summertime, it's July, it's nice and hot, 90 some degrees. I have a couple different vehicles in here that have AC concerns. So I figured I would do a series of AC diagnostic videos for you guys to help you diagnose the most common issues you'll come across with your AC system. So this right here is an 04 F-150. We have a low charge level in this vehicle. So I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like when you have a low charge level. I'll show you both uh, what the compressor sounds like, what the manifold gauge shows, and of course, what, what the discharge temp is. So the very first thing you wanna do is open the hood and we're gonna attach our manifold gauge set. Now you don't need a full gauge set like this with the high, with the high and low side. You can just use the low side for most of this diagnostics, most of these diagnostics, but I like to have, a, of course, a full manifold gauge set uh, for the harder to diagnose ones. So what you wanna do is go ahead and start connecting it in. So the high side is gonna be connected into uh, a bigger fitting on here that is connected to a smaller pipe. And then the low side connects into a smaller fitting on there and a big old fat pipe like that, okay? So that's how you identify them up them on there screw them in and see where our pressures are sitting here static now as you can see we do have pressure in the system so the ac compressor should turn on okay so with pressure in the system that's good to go keeps the moisture keeps the air out of there that's what you want to see some kind of pressure in the system it keeps the integrity of the system uh good to go so we have our gauges connected let's go ahead and start it up and see what's going on like I said, it's July, it's like 90 degrees here in the shop. So, <clears throat> I'll show you right there, if you could focus. And um, trust me, it's 90 degrees outside. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll turn the AC on, of course, put on full cold, and they want on two or three to get the airflow across the evaporator, okay? Stick your gauge inside of there and let it go. And then we'll go back under the hood here and we can identify a low charge level real, real quick. The first thing you'll notice is all that noise under the hood. Hear that, that clicking? That is the AC compressor. It keeps cycling on and off. An AC compressor has a short cycle time like that and it keeps going on and off, on and off is the most common, most obvious indicator that you have a low charge level. We have the luxury of having a manifold gauge set here so we can look at the gauges on the high and low side and see what's going on. So on the high side here, let's concentrate on that. You can see it, it does increase, but it's not increasing to where it should be. This, right, this vehicle has the FOT, which is a fixed orifice tube restriction in there. So when we're running and then this hot outside, we should be 225, 250, no sweat. Next, we'll look at the low side here. We have a refrigerant in it, yes, but it's getting sucked down way too fast. So it goes down, boom. Low pressure cycling switch cuts off, saves the compressor. The reason being is, first of all, you're gonna ice the evaporator, uh, but the other thing is you, want, you need pressure in the system coming through to drag the lubricant through the system. So it's protecting the compressor this way. So it's cutting it off around 25, and about 45 or so, maybe 55 apparently, this one's set to, it'll turn it back on. Once the compressor comes on, it's sucking the system dry quick because there's not enough refrigerant, okay? So like I said, the gauges tell all, you can hear it, but you can also look down in here and watch the compressor. On and off, on and off. And that's exactly what it looks like. Now as you can imagine, with it turning on and off like this, we're not getting that, um, we're, there's enough refrigerant to come through the actual evaporator inside of there to make that heat transfer happen, to get the heat out of the cabin. It takes the heat out of the cabin and brings it back out here for cooling, okay? That's how the heat transfer process works. But they're running, what did we drop down to? Uh, not so much. A couple of degrees probably. And it feels like nothing's really happening. That's because, darn focus. 
uh, that's because the compressor is just coming on for real short cycle times because there's no there's low refrigerant in the system so just for clarification what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna suck the system down pull into a vacuum and we're gonna charge it <clears throat> properly with the AC machine to spec <clears throat> and then we're gonna show you what it should like what it should look like on the manifold gauge set here and you'll be able to see the difference between this low charge level and a fully charged system one thing i want to note right now while this is still sucking down and draining the oil out of the system so we can properly recharge it is that this is an fot system it's a fixed orifice tube system so there's a little tube in there with a screen on it and it's a fixed restriction in there it's a certain size orifice tube inside of there so it never changes so when you have a low charge level on a system like this every time you will see it cycling and dropping compressor kicking off back on over and over again you'll definitely see that on a fixed orifice tube system now ford started using uh, txvs and variable displacement compressors and scroll compressors with these valves in them and those ones will also do the the cycling of the compressor and the cycling of the pressures on there but it'll be less frequent okay um, because they're kind of compensating for that on the fly uh, whereas fot systems have no compensation it's a fixed orifice tube um, and it will cycle real quick like that on and off on and off either way you're not gonna have any cooling and the other thing i want to note is that we looked at these gauges earlier obviously this one was too low you know sucking it way too low way too fast but on the high side our pressures were also low so when you have a low charge level you'll see low and low okay abnormally low on both sides of the system so the way you identify it if you have a txv or a fot system is you want to follow the lines coming out of the evaporator which is going to be on the firewall so our evaporator is down inside of there you see those two lines coming out of there yep so you follow those out so a lot of times they come out just far enough and you'll see the txv block of aluminum uh, connecting the two and then it'll come out over here to the compressor and condenser and all that uh, whereas these ones like on the fot systems that little tube is inside of the high side heading to the uh, evaporator so in this case that would be this one right here this is the outlet coming out of the condenser okay so this one comes out and it goes over to it so uh, you'll see the one thing you want to look for, you'll see, is, let me get you in here, uh, right here, you see these little crimps, you want on each side? That is how Ford crimps and holds in that uh, fixed orifice tube inside of there. There'll be a crimp on either side for the manufacturing process, and that's the stop for the, the little uh, fixed orifice tube inside of there. So that's how you identify if you have a fixed orifice tube system or not. Like I said, these, uh, the Ford used the fixed orifice tube almost exclusively until 05 when they went to TXVs for the Ford 500 and then they started bringing it to other models from then on out. Um, so at this point, our system is fully sucked down. Okay, it's, it's recovered all the refrigerant that was in there and then of course put it into a vacuum for a bit. You can see it had half a pound in there well, guess what? I think this one takes two pounds about in there. So yeah, a little over two pounds it looks like. Um, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge the system and then we're gonna let you see how everything should look when the system is fully charged compared to a low charge. Now let's take a look at the same exact system with the proper charge level. So first we'll take a look at the manifold gauge set on here and you can see our high side pressures are 175. It's a little bit cooler out right now because it's raining, you can probably hear that. Um, but when it gets hotter out, maybe 200, 225, 250, no sweat. The side you want to concentrate on is the low side. That's going to correlate to your discharge temp in the cabin there, which is actually going to cool you off, okay? So you can see ours is around 34 degrees or so, sitting pretty, and it's just flowing and the compressor is constantly on. That is what you want to see. That's how you get that cooling effect by transferring the refrigerant through the system back out to the condenser. 
okay? So you can see our pressures are absolutely perfect. Remember, you want the 30 to 45 PSI on the side, depending on the ambient temp. Like I said, it's raining right now, it's a little bit cooler, um, so it forces down closer to 34. Again, the compressor down there is constantly on. This is gonna cause a really good cooling effect. You can see it's constantly on down there. Big difference. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, discharge temps. Yamahama, coming down like cats and dogs out there. Inside the cabin here, let's look at our discharge temp. That's Foki. So right around 40, that's pretty darn good considering uh, the vehicle's not moving. Now once the vehicle's moving and the compressor's spinning faster, and then of course you get the heat load out of the cabin and there's more airflow across the condenser, then it's also gonna cool down maybe 36 degrees coming out of the vent. Either way, this is how it looks when the system is properly charged. Huge, huge difference. That's all for now. Hopefully it's helped you guys fix your Ford's AC system yourself. I'll see you next time, guys.